Let's go ahead and start on our next Soundtrack Pro from start to finish. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the timeline. If we get time, we'll talk about preferences. If not, we'll save that for our next video. So let's start off. As you can see here, I have some audio in my timeline. It's just miscellaneous audio. You can use whatever you want. Now you can see it's a pretty long project. I can use my little scroll bar here to move down. I can see all my audio and there's a problem. I can't see it all in my view here, you know. Well, this is great if you want to uh, zoom in on a certain section and see the, the waveform a little closer. But what if you want to see your whole project and not have to scroll around to find a certain point? Well, of course, you can use this little bar here to scroll and shrink things down or make things bigger, as you can see. And the same thing here with the either side of this scroll bar here. You can grab the one end make it bigger or smaller. But, you know, you have to use your mouse. So what if, what, what if I don't want to use my mouse? There's this keyboard shortcut that takes care of that for you. And that keyboard shortcut is Shift-Z. If you hit Shift-Z, you'll notice, boom, it sizes my whole project down into my timeline so I can see the whole, whole thing, okay? And that is one keyboard shortcut that every Soundtrack Pro user has to burn into his brain, okay? Now, everybody knows the play button. This right here is the cycle button, which will cause it to loop if you have a cycle region, okay? And to create a cycle region, you go up to your little timeline here, right click, you'll see cycle region. Let's set an endpoint. Now we have this little blue arrows here, and I can grab these little blue arrows, okay? And set a cycle region. So now if I go ahead and play this cycle region after I've zoomed in, you can see it's going to loop. So that's how you create a loop region. If I turn this little button off, you can see that dims down and it will not keep cycling that little region. And you can clear this out. You can say remove cycle region and that will get rid of our cycle region altogether. Cycle region is really, really handy if you want to just zero in on a certain part of your audio that you're adjusting and you just want to hear it over and over and over again so you can get it just right. Now a few more keyboard shortcuts that correspond with Final Cut Pro are the J, K, and L keys. They're pretty much the same thing. L key gets your playhead moving forward. K key stops it. The J key gets your playhead moving backwards at normal speed. K stops it. Now, J is backwards, L is forward. If you tap them once, it's normal speed. Twice, double speed. Three times, triple. And four times, quadruple speed. So if I hit the L key four times, it'll go forward at four speed four times as fast. Watch. And K to stop. Those are some pretty good keyboard shortcuts that anybody ought to know that is even halfway familiar with Final Cut Pro because it does, they do carry over. Now what do the right and left arrow keys do? The right and left arrow keys go forward one frame at a time. You can't really see it because the timeline is so big, but if you look at my, uh, over here, you can see as I hit the right arrow, it goes forward. Left arrow, it goes backwards. The up arrow goes backwards to the previous edit. The down arrow goes forward to the previous edit. Okay, let's hit Shift-Z and zoom in. Let me show you that. Hit the down arrow. You can see I'm going forward to each edit. The up arrow goes backwards to each edit. Now, if you option, use the Option key, and use the right arrow, you can see it's moving forward one grid line at a time. These little grid lines here, you see them? If I hold the Option key and push the right arrow, it goes one grid line at a time, or the left arrow goes one grid line at a time back, okay? So if you notice, if I don't hold the Option key, we're just getting one frame at a time. You can't really tell it because we're not zoomed in, but you can tell it by looking over here. But if I hold the Option key, we actually skip grid lines. Of course, we can adjust our track height with these little buttons here, okay? But there are keyboard commands that correlate with that. You can use the command key and 6, 7, or 9. If you hold the command key and hit 6, it makes your track small, 7, medium, 9, large. And it's easy to go back and forth. Command 6, 7, or 9. Great little keyboard shortcuts. Now, what if I just want to zoom in? Well, that's easy too. Hit the, hold the command key. And hit the equals key. And it will zoom, 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 zoom. And now you can see it's zoomed way out. So let's bring that back out. With Shift-Z, you see everything fits. If you want to zoom out, 
Command equals zooms in. Command dash zooms out. Now this little thing here is just your snapping. Do you want your snapping to snap to seconds, frames, or the ruler ticks? Okay. This here, this little button here, is turns your snapping on and off. And this one here will turn on your master envelope. If I turn it on, you'll notice up here, in our global view, we have a master track now. It's visible. I turn it off. Okay. And um, that's pretty much the simplistic overview of the timeline. Now we're not going to go over all these little obscure buttons because we're going to get to those as we get through it because this here is like a midi sync button and it's hard to explain right now oh yeah this right here is where your playhead is at this is the exact time of your playhead location as the playhead moves that time, that time will move okay and uh, that's the basics of moving around the timeline you set a cycle region you can see our little blue line here again if I right click I can set a Set an endpoint for a cycle region, and, and I can adjust the in and out point with this. You can see there's our cycle region, and if I want to cycle that region, I just got to turn my cycle button on. We have our playhead time. We have our zoom buttons and our track heights. Uh, the track heights can be adjusted with commands 6, 7, and 9. Okay, don't forget about your J, K, and L keys. They are a wonderful little... Um, handy sh keyboard shortcut and don't forget command plus and command dash or command minus will zoom and zoom out and zoom in and I'm trying to think if there's anything else everybody knows to play spacebar plays and stops and that is the basic basic navigation of the timeline there's a lot more to it a lot more to it because I haven't talked about individual track settings like the record and mute and solo buttons and we're going to talk about all this I'm just mainly getting you the overview right now and the navigation and kind of get you familiar with it I believe in our next video we're gonna start going over our preferences and I'm going to explain these preferences to you and how they work out and then we're gonna get into the sexy stuff and start editing some audio so I hope you stay with me and until then I hope you have a good one